greatest and most significant battles in the history of naval warfare occurred in May 1942. The place, Coral Sea, South Pacific. The participants, the Japanese 5th Carrier Division and the United States Pacific Fleet. The issue at stake was simple and clear cut. The enemy was moving rapidly towards Australia and had to be stopped. He was stopped. The Allied victory in the South Pacific will stand in world history as a noble monument to the memory of the gallant men and officers of the United States Navy who fought and won the Battle of the Coral Sea. Signed, Rear Admiral John J. Bergen, USNR, President, Navy League of the United States. Flyboy, Skipper? No, but we will. They got this Philippine coast pretty well covered. How are our passengers, Lynn? Closer than kissing cousins. The Army isn't used to such tight quarters. Beach Corriga, though, huh? Yeah. They aren't complaining. It's just that a couple of the higher brass isn't used to such close proximity to the enlisted man. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't mind the enlisted man. Aye, aye, sir. Up scope. There's another one around to pick them up. There is. Where? Here. Down scope. Prepare to service. Aye, sir. Skipper, those flyboys might be back at any minute. We wouldn't stand a prayer against them. Neither would the men in that raft. Well, this is just plain We're out of service. service. Relax, Len. You never know. There might be some nurses on that raft. Like to know our exact time of arrival. Yeah. 
Well, would you inform the general that our um, timetable hasn't been too exact here lately, but our estimated time of arrival is about uh, two and a half days. wanted a periscope camera, why, they would have invented one long ago. Well, Franklin, you didn't enjoy the distinction of serving in the peacetime Navy like I did. In those days, the Navy had all the time in the world, but no money. Well, they've got all the money, but no time. <laughs> Say that again. With this baby, you can scout airstrips, shipping, anything, and prove that you saw it all. Problem, Bates? Oh, no, sir. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean, uh, it, it can wait, sir. It must be something terribly important. What is it? Oh, well, uh, no, I'd rather not now, sir. You're busy. And... Bates, what's your problem? Well, sir, somebody hit my bubble gum. What again? My whole supply. And I got a sneaking hunch who it is. Halliday, can you clear up this big mystery? Yes, sir. I hit it. Why does he buy his own bubble gum? Maybe you can explain that. Begging your pardon, sir, maybe Bates can explain this. I tell you, this sub will never sink. It's lined with Bates bubble gum. Those charts are ready on the bridge, Lieutenant. Okay, thanks. Halliday, you and Frank come with me. Bates, keep an eye on that camera. Aye, right, sir, I'll watch it like a hawk. Halliday, I'll see you get your bubble gum back. If your mother knew the trouble this caused, she'd never send it to you. I think I'll send her a letter. Dear Mrs. Bates, will you kindly stop sending your son that bubble gum? It's just a bunch of your entire crew, a top army general, and the United States submarine. I thought I had a fair chance to save those men, sir. Conway, under the circumstances, any skipper in the submarine service would have done the same thing. But when you're charged with the responsibility of carrying a four-star general on a top priority mission, you've got to play it by the book. This is a war we're having, not fleet maneuvers off San Diego. A fair chance isn't good enough. I understand, sir. I hope you do. Because I'm sending you on a mission where there isn't any leeway for mistakes. Does that worry you? Yes, sir. Good. These flags show the known enemy bases and naval installations. There are a great many others we don't know about. Look at how they're patterned. Like a bow with the arrow going straight through here. The Coral Sea, huh? Intelligence is positive through the Coral Sea to New Guinea and Australia. Well, we're badly outnumbered, but we're gonna put a task force in front of them somehow. Oh, if you're thinking that you and the Dragonfish are going to join this task force right away, you're wrong. I've got a more important job for you to do first. More important than, uh... Yes. A scouting mission to locate the Japanese fleet. We've got to have more data on their strength and their positions, especially the carriers. We'll be operating in radio silence, Admiral, right? Yes. Any radio transmission between the task force and the dragonfish will alert the Japanese. When you accumulate your data, you'll rendezvous with our ships. Give them the information by blinker. You leave here at 0400 tomorrow. Your recognition signal and the rendezvous point are in these sealed orders. Open them on the eighth day. Proceed accordingly. Now remember this. If you have trouble, 
any trouble. Your responsibility is to those orders. The Japanese must not know our rendezvous point. If you have to scuttle yourself and sacrifice every man on board to prevent it, you'll do it. That's all. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, Admiral, uh, my executive officer's been uh, working on a periscope camera. He has confidence in it, and he'd like your permission to use it. Well, certainly. If it works, it could be very valuable on this mission. Keep the line moving. Two bucks to see the thrill of your life. said it only cost him a dollar. What's the matter, Bert? Frank, did you ever hear the loss of playing a man? Uh, uh... Okay, Mac, that's all. Next. Come on, let's hurry up. We got two scopes. Come on. Two bucks, don't give me a lease on that. Come on, we got a whole crew behind us. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Hey! Yes, sir. Mind if I have a look through my camera? Oh, no, no, sir. No charge, sir. I, I mean, uh... My contribution to the Recreation and Welfare Fund. Absolutely perfect. What about that, Franklin? I think Uncle Pete would be proud of you, sir. <laughs> Come on. Carl, who made this coffee, anyhow? I don't know, but it tastes like battery acid. Here you go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. You know how important this is, don't you, Lynn? Well, sure. Now we can give the Admiral a picture of every Japanese coastal installation from here to the rendezvous point. Imperial Japanese Navy. 
Probably the Pearl Harbor boys. Hmm. Do you want me to call battle stations? No, the only thing we're going to shoot this trip is that camera of yours. Well, deal. I'll go get it. No, we're not going in yet. We don't have to, Skipper. I can get that whole Rose Gallery right from here. Well, the only thing I want you to do now is plot the position of those channel buoys. Afterwards, we'll go out, surface, charge our batteries, come back for a closer look in the morning. Well, Skipper, there might be controlled minefields in there. Right. Yeah, and if we go down below periscope depth, well, those currents might set us into one of those minefields. Well, that's a chance we have to take. What's the matter, Lynn? Did you ever hear of a close-up? Captain. Captain. Hmm? It's 0400, sir. Thanks, Chief. Tell the conning officer I'll be right up. Aye, aye, sir. This is the captain. It is now 0415. We're about to enter a minefield. I want every man as quiet as possible. So we can get our information and get out of here. Break ship for silent running. All compartments rig for silent running. Bring it up to 5 8 feet. 5 8 high. Left 10 degrees rudder, all ahead one third. Left 10 degrees rudder, all ahead one third. All answer ahead one third, rudder is left 10. Very well. Atlanta Channel, boys, is dead ahead, sir. Rudder midships, steady as she goes. Rudder's amidships, steady on course 250. Sir. Time to turn. We cleared the first leg. Make your course 270. Right down the slot. 270. Study 270. Very well. According to my plot, we're almost out of the minefield. Bring up 60 feet. 60 high. If I knew a prayer, I... Never mind, boy. I'll say an extra one for you. Up, Scott. Didn't go on. The 
Must be a control mine. Mark it on your yourself. Make your whole thing. Gotta be clear of the minefield. We're out of the channel. Runner midships. All stop. Runners and midships. Answers all stop, sir. Very well. Easier down, center on the bottom. Center on the bottom, aye, aye, Captain. Rig for depth charge. Torpedo room, stand by. We may have to use them yet. having trouble with that leak again, sir. Report damage. All compartments report damage. Main power is still out, sir. Forward torpedo room flooding. Runners jammed. Leak in the after torpedo room, but under control, sir. One more pattern, old Buster Hull. They've stopped. They're right on top of us. Just sitting there. Waiting for us to make a break and run. So we wait. Twelve hours, sir. The air is going to start to get foul. Sir, that aft torpedo room is having trouble with that leak again. Very well. What are they doing up there? All right, all right. Don't lose your bubble, kid. Attention! There are two depth charges fastened to your hull. You have five minutes to surrender, but the submarine commander shall remain on board for inspection. That's all the pressure. Knock it off! Come on. Sector! Tap out an answer. Tell them we got their message and stand by for a reply. Lynn. Aye, aye, sir. Go down and get the burn basket. Take it to the wardrobe. Burn all that stuff, too, Lynn. You can't burn this. This film will just poison the air. It's fouling off already. All right, we'll just have to take a chance and blow it through the after tube. Put it in here. Use that camera to weight it down. This is the captain speaking. Yeah, Bates and Connors report to the wardroom right away. Remember, Len, don't do anything till I give you the signal. Jeff, you mean you're going to surrender? We're going to surrender, not the ship. Bates, can you build up enough impulse pressure to fire those after tubes? Yes, sir. But the tubes are in bad shape after that last ash can. I can't put a fish through them. All right, pull one out. Build up enough impulse pressure to 
fire a water slug. Aye, sir. Connors, rig up a demolition charge with a wire leading to a manual detonator on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. Jeff, we've only got their word that depth charges are fastened to the hull. I know. <sighs> we haven't got anything left to fight with. Hurry up. We haven't got much time. Sector, tap out a message. Tell them we're ready to service and surrender. Aye, aye, sir. Stand by to service. Stand by to surface, aye, sir. Depth, one, four, two feet. Very well. Demolition charges all rigged, sir. We'll get you. Have torpedo room. Tell Lieutenant Ross to stand by. Standing by, sir. I hope we've got enough pressure to clear the tube, sir. So do I. The air manifold rigged. The air manifold's rigged, sir. Very well. Commence blowing main ballast. Tube's out. Fire! Fire! You'll never see that bag again, sir. All hands, this is the captain speaking. Our batteries are flat. The main motors are flooded. We are unable to fire our torpedoes, therefore the crew of this ship, we're going to surrender. Now keep calm. You've been a good crew. We've surfaced, sir. Introduce myself. I am Commander Nagano, Imperial Japanese Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jefferson Conway, United States Navy. We followed your orders, Commander. Very sensible. I ask you to remain here as an insurance against accidents. There won't be any accidents. Good. Then we will begin our inspection. You've got about 30 seconds to get off this boat, Commander. Ike, Hayaku! the Japanese intelligence department. I'm happy to tell you that your skipper is okay. In fact, uh, he should be here any moment. Skipper! Skipper! Hey, How are you? Nice to see you, sir. Hey! Oh, you all right? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, good. 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 Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, all your names, ranks, and serial numbers are on this list. The rest of the crew is below decks and well cared for. It's going to be a long war, gentlemen. You should be glad you are out of it. 
This is sake. Rice wine. To your continued good health, gentlemen. Well, we have a lot to talk over. We've got nothing to talk over, Commander. You've got all the information you're entitled to under the terms of the Geneva Convention, you know that. We are not concerned with that foolishness, Commander. And uh, we have a little more information than you think. Our divers have been busy, as you can see. And you have the thanks of the Japanese Navy for shooting our ships with cameras instead of torpedoes. All we would like to know is why. But that, that's just our hobby. We're going to enter them in the best photo of the year contest. I'm sorry, but we have to find out all about your mission. I don't have to tell you, there are many methods of doing this, and we know them all. Like I said, it's going to be a long war. Help yourself. It's on the house. I don't get it, Skipper. Why all the hospitality? Glenn? Tell us about your Uncle Petrie. My uncle? Yeah, your Uncle Petrie. Oh. Well? Uncle Petrie had one bad habit. Liquor. Uncle yours, sir? Hard to believe. Yes. Lady. You know how some people save string? Well, Uncle Petrie saved corks. Amazing, sir. Yeah, and he, he drank so much that at the end of 26 years, he had enough corks saved up to build a fishing boat. A boat made out of corks. Genius, Lieutenant. Sheer genius. Yeah, well, that's nothing. Wait till I tell you how he used to catch fish. How did he do that? Well, the ocean was so soaked up with all that liquor from those corks that the fish didn't wait to be caught. They just jumped in that boat, dead drunk. And that, my friends, is how Uncle Petrie invented pickled herring. <laughs> Good morning. Everyone in good shape? Commander, when am I going to get to see my men? Oh, they're on their way to a regular prison camp, Commander. But we have something special for you five. Your new home. Welcome to the interrogation camp number seven. The torpedo boat will be picking us up. The island's about three miles wide and five long, if you're curious. And uh, if you're wondering, it would even be possible to escape for anybody who can swim 200 miles. Follow me. Well, welcome to the question and answer camp. I'm Jamie Harris, late of the Australian Air Force. Jeff Conway, United States Navy. This is Lieutenant Peg Whitcomb, Australian Nursing Corps. She's our medical staff. Lieutenant, nice meeting you. Uh, How's this... the war coming, Yank? Oh, no better, no worse. 
Ah, it'll get worse, though. They've pulled over half their troops out of here. That's very true. They are short-handed. Yeah, there's a big build-up going on. We heard that before we left Australia. Listen, you don't think they're going Oh, wait a minute. Who's the girl? An interpreter. Among other things, she's a great and good friend of the Japanese. Moshi Horyoga. And the officer? Captain Yamazaki, head of the camp guard. Is he as tough as he looks? He doesn't have to be. There's no escape from this place. Kimostatius. I'm speaking for Captain Yamazaki. Prisoners will obey all orders instantly. Any disobedience or infraction will be severely punished. Mata Horyoga, Nikita Baiwa, Sukumade, Sosasuru. You are prisoners of war and will be shot if you attempt to escape. Well, he's a man of a few words. Who's the camp commander? We haven't had one for several weeks. We used to have a colonel named Takaish. Yeah, and you yanked a bit of pride doesn't come back. I've got a bit of a sample of his work. Which one of you is Commander Conway? I am. My name is Karen Phillips. I'm the interpreter for the captain of the guard. Hmm. I'll bet you got the best job on this whole island. <laughs> oh, Len Ross, Lieutenant U.S. Navy, ma'am, your enemy, unfortunately. All right. What do you want? You're to report to Commander Mori. Please follow me. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? The silent Commander Conway has been in my family for almost 200 years. Before the war, it was a plantation. How nice of them to lend it to the Japanese. While they're here, I intend to cooperate with them. But I'm neutral. In my book, anybody who cooperates with my enemies isn't neutral. But you are neutralized yourself now, Commander. You're out of the war, and you should be glad. That's where you're wrong, lady. I'm not out of it till I'm dead or it's over, whichever one comes first. Be sensible, Mr. Conway. The Japanese are not unpleasant if you cooperate with them. You cooperate with them all you want. Just don't waste your breath trying to convert me. Don't you understand that nothing can stop them? How many more ships and men do you have to lose to convince you that you're beaten? I understand one thing, the one... Please, Commander Mori's in there. <laughs> What do you think of our tropical resort? Delightful. I'll take Miami Beach. I'm glad to see. You still have your irrepressible American sense of humor. Get to the point, Commander. You're wasting time. I hope not. I sincerely hope not. Cigarette? No, thanks. I'll uh, smoke this. I don't blame you. There's really no smoke like an American cigarette, is there? We have a shortage of fine Virginia tobacco at the moment. I hope it doesn't last too long. Conway, I don't like this war any more than you do. Probably less, as a matter of fact. I spent a good many years in your country, and I have a great respect for your people. Nobody will be happier than I when these hostilities are over. You must believe that. All right. I'll believe it. I wonder how long that will be. As long as it takes us to win it. Are all your countrymen that confident? Of course. Why is that? You say you lived in America, you should know why. There's only one way this war can end, Commander. I also know Japan quite well, Mr. Conway. We two are most ambitious and industrious people. There are important differences, however. 
For instance, you Americans have a lot of physical courage. But uh, up here, you are vulnerable. So much so that it amazes me how you won all the other wars. Maybe we're lucky, Commander. Always with the jokes, eh? This war, you are not going to win. For many reasons. One of them is that vulnerability I spoke of. You make mistakes. For an example, why didn't you blow up yourself with all your men? We Japanese would have done that. I figure we can do you more harm alive than dead, Commander. Think so? I am going to prove you wrong. You have the information we need, and I'm going to get it from you. By the way, please don't be alarmed at the sight of any uh, punishment devices around the camp. My predecessor here, Colonel Takeshi, employed these uh, medieval methods. Personally, I don't believe in them. There are other means. Is that all, Commander? Yes. We will talk again. And think carefully about what I have said. I'm thinking all the time, Commander. Pompey! Mr. Conway. I must have that information. It's entirely up to you whether I get it now or later. and the method of irrigation, I'll admit. But my countrymen have used it for several thousand years, and it still works fine. You are in charge of the work detail, Commander. In charge, you understand. You merely supervise, you do not work. I prefer not to take any chances with your health. You are important to us. Commander, my men change shifts every hour. I suggest uh, your men do the same. Uh, by the way, fresh water is scarce on this island, so I'll have to insist that you don't drink any, except uh, what is furnished at meal times. Mr. Bates, Mr. Ross, you take the first shift. Reasonable. We wouldn't ask you to do anything we don't do ourselves. Besides, the exercise will give your men a healthy appetite. For what? Chop suey? I never liked it. Oh, that, that's Chinese, isn't it? So sorry, old man. Hours up, Skipper. I'll take it, man. No. I said I'll take it. Twenty. Rough look at you, slime face. I'm all right, Jeff. I 
I joined the Navy because I hated marching. Why, you Tennessee pea picker, you didn't wear shoes until you went to Annapolis. <laughs> Something you can do. What? Tell them whatever it is they want to know. That is, if you care at all about the lives of your men. The Japanese must not know our rendezvous point. If you have to scuttle yourself and sacrifice every man on board to prevent it, you'll do it. the most they can give out, I can take it. Can you take it for three days? Or three days. Because that's the day to rendezvous. What'll happen if we're not there? They'll leave. After that, I'll tell them anything they want to know. I might even tell them the location of your Uncle Petrie's sour mash still. Fellow white collar workers, we are about to receive a visit from that champion of the downtrodden, your friend and mine. Smiler. With interpreter. You all right, Lynn? Yeah. Wait there, Bates. Tell the captain, Lieutenant Ross is too sick to work. The captain said he's just following orders and reminds the prisoners that they must also follow orders or be punished. But the man can't walk! He wants to know if you're ready to answer Commander Mori's questions. Tell him to go to hell! Shinji Mike. Hey, Commander. Commander. What can I do for you, Conway? Commander, one of my ministers. I know, Mr. Ross, isn't it? Sorry. How are you feeling, though? What difference does it make how I'm feeling? I say, how are you feeling? Well, what do you care how I'm feeling? I'm talking about one of my men. I'm concerned about your health. That is why you are not allowed to walk the wheel. I want you in good shape when it comes time to vote. To vote? What are you talking about? You know all about uh, democracy in America. You vote on things. Majority rules. Another few days on the water wheel, and your men will be ready to vote on whether you talk or keep quiet. If you talk, no more water for you. If you don't, uh, Ross might get sicker. He might even die. So might the others. What is it? Is it the information you think I've got it? Is that it? Well, put me on the wheel, but take Ross off. Mr. Conway, 
You don't seem to understand. Putting you on the wheel would be defeating our own purpose. What does that mean? If anything happens to you, we never get the information. Len and the rest of your men. Tell them whatever it is they All want right, to All right, take it easy. That water wheel's tough enough. I know he's going to die from it. I suppose Maury's given you a guarantee that none of your men will be harmed. That could be worse. He's kept his word so far. Yes, and Maury hasn't produced any results either. If his methods continue to fail, you can rely on Japanese intelligence to replace him. This is all rather academic, isn't it? Sooner or later, you and your men will begin to really suffer. Is the information you have worth all their lives? That's my decision to make, Lady Nightingale. Meanwhile, you just keep I've your mouth out of it. I've seen the best. <coughs> You're a swan. Pig, please. <coughs> I'm sorry. I notice your men don't have to work very much. They treat them pretty good. Why is that? Did you give them all the information they wanted to know? <laughs> I didn't have the information they thought I had. I finally convinced Colonel Takeishi of that, after three of my men had been put to death. As for not working us too hard, I don't know about that. They were getting ready to transfer us when you blokes showed up. Something changed their minds. I've no mm. idea what. Maybe it's some more of his advanced psychology. Maybe he figures that uh, your group can soften us up. You seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. Well, it could be, Conway. What do you propose to do about it? Get out, that's what. <laughs> what, escape? Right. From a Jap-held island five miles by three in the middle of a Japanese ocean? It's impossible. It's still called the Pacific Ocean. They don't own it yet. We gave that torpedo boat we came in the cove with. There aren't more than a dozen guards there. Yes, and they've all got guns. <laughs> Gentlemen, tea on the after patio. Oh, I'm so fed up with all those eggs and bacon. Oh, it's the sort of plates I can stand. Well, if you gentlemen would like, I'll take you out for breakfast. Uh, Compliments to the chef, would you? You left out your old socks this time. Boy, I love you. Do you want to see the best to see? Be laughing so loud without all these guns around you. <laughs> I'll guarantee that. Hey! Would you like me to translate the sergeant's last remarks for you? That won't be necessary, Commander. We've all got a good idea what he meant. I doubt that. It was a challenge, Mr. Bates. In effect, he said uh, if you aren't a prisoner, she would take you apart. Yeah? Well, you tell that son. Knock it off, Bates. Shall I tell him his challenge is not accepted? Skipper, I can handle that big fat slob. Let me take a crack at him, will you? Frankly, I wouldn't advise you to try. The sergeant's very good at the art of wrestling, as are all Japanese soldiers. Skipper, I know something about that Japanese style wrestling. I've been in the Navy for 15 years and spent most of my time in the Far East. 
I flattened my share of these characters. It's can take him, Skipper. I've seen him in action. Well, Commander? Go ahead, Bates. Someone who is Oi! Give him room, fellas. Get that man. rice picker, Bates. Come on, Come on, man. Man. <laughs> Jump on him, boy. I'll stand. I don't suppose an apology from me would mean anything. Not a damn thing. It was my intention to demonstrate the superiority of the Japanese soldier. The psychological approach again. And it backfired. You mean that fight was your idea? Yes. Oshika was acting under my orders when he challenged your man. And when he picked up a rifle and killed him, whose orders were those? You know better than to ask that, Commander. I'm truly sorry. I never would have suggested the contest if I had had any idea that... Uh, it's quite obvious now that my psychological methods are not going to work now. None of your methods are going to work. Not now or ever. Possibly not. In any case, I have been given another assignment. I'm being relieved by my predecessor, Colonel Takeshi. As you know, his ways of obtaining information is different from mine. I heard. I'm speaking now as one human being to another not as one enemy to another. You may all be killed at the Colonel Tagish's orders if you continue your silence. More psychology, Commander? No. The facts. Again, I'm very sorry about this morning. And sorry about what I know is going to happen to you. I believe in this war, Conway. And I believe in striking the enemy and killing him if he resists. But I don't believe in murder. They are sending a boat for me, and I am leaving this evening. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah. I thought 
thanks. I'll give it back in the morning. Please keep it. I thought it might help comfort you and your friends. Aid and comfort to the enemy, Miss Phillips. I'm not your enemy. Whose are you? I told you, I'm neutral. Still, huh? No, not anymore. Will you help us? We need weapons. I can't possibly do that. That's what I figured. You can't escape. You'll only get killed trying. I couldn't bring any guns. Maybe some knife blades. Get them. There's your lady friend. So early in the morning, too. Oh. Miss Japanese interrogation camp of 1942. What she's doing around here. Oh, come on, Jeff. You don't really think she's gonna help us, do you? Huh? Come on, Peg, let's take a walk. Kawai so nasarasan. Now what did she forget? Be casual, Peg. Casual. Miss Whitcomb, come over here. Get angry at me. And when you hit me, grab my hand. Come on, hurry up. Go ahead, Peg. <laughs> <laughs> Miserable wench. You no good, treacherous female. That's a name. <laughs> grab my hat, hurry up. <laughs> Go inside and rip it apart. Go on, rip it apart. Go on! Where'd you get that? Hey. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, they're like it's razors. Knife blades. Without a handle. Man, it's a cinch. It's hard for it. Hey. Yeah? Have you got any thread? Uh, well, only a little. Uh, will you unravel a blanket or, or some clothes? Sure. I'll find the handles of thread. I don't know whether I ever told you, but my Uncle Peter is part Seminole Indian. Boy, did he ever teach me up. Jeff! Jeff! Yeah. <coughs> well, like I said, look, this is hardwood. Yeah. What? Well, I can make a bow out of that. A bow? Sure. And bowstrings you can make out of quill thread. You know, out of uniforms, anything. Well, and arrows are simple to carve out of anything. And arrowheads are easy. I used to make them out of tin cans. We can make them out of these. I used to be a pretty fair archer. You know, if we can knock over just one guard and get his gun, we might have a chance. Hmm, about one in 50. With those floodlights on every second, it's not going to be easy.
Robbie. The captain orders you to line up in front of your bunks while he speaks. He says your leg was not stiff yesterday. Oh, well, uh, tell him that I have a very rare American disease. It's extremely contagious. Mm -hmm. also. <clears throat> Mori, Mori, Takaishi, Commander Mori will be replaced tomorrow by Colonel Takahish. Tomorrow? That means we've got to break out of here tonight. Is there a shortcut to the boat? Stream? He says Colonel Takahish will kill you if you do not answer directly every question he asks. You know where the generator is? Record at four o'clock, we'll meet you at the boat. Oh, uh, tell him we appreciate his advice and we'll give it careful consideration. He wants you to stand at attention while he leaves. Attention! thing works. You hit them with that, they're going to make a noise like a bag of squashed cats.
からすぐ裏へ回って撃てお前は手榴弾と照明灯と持ってこい。I, I don't think I can make it. You'll have to go on without me. What happened to Len? I'm afraid. He, I'm afraid he bought it. But we got, got some of the others, though. Him too, sir. You make it all right? Yeah, it's all right. Look, Jeff, we're going to have to shoot our way down to the boat. Guards downstream? Yeah, I don't know how many, though. Can't be more than one or two. We've killed everybody else. What happened? Everything's okay. Any sign of Karen?
Hey, Skipper, we're running out of time. Yeah, it'll be light pretty soon. You go back to the boat. If I'm not there in a half an hour, you go without me. Oh, look, Jesse. I said take off. Holiday? You. Sir, if you want some rest. Steer 235. That's as good a course as any. 235, I see. Set down by that torpedo boat. Stand by. We trail them on a southeasterly course at about 5,000 yards. When we last saw them, they were here. We moved in to get a closer look and 
That's when we ran into that minefield. Did you recognize any of their ships? Yes, sir. There was uh, three carriers of the Shoho class. I'm certain they were part of Admiral Harris' 5th Carrier Division. That makes sense. And the Coral Sea now, if they haven't changed Ready direction. Light Baker is airborne. There's no reason why they should. They're headed for Port Moresby. If our intelligence is correct, they'll hit it in exactly three days. Unless we locate them first. We'll find them. Every plane we can spare will be put in that part of the Coral Sea immediately. Ready room one. Light on. Thinking of the ship you lost, that some of your men died for nothing. Don't. Think of the lives you saved by getting us the information we wanted when we wanted. Think of that, Jeff. Think of that. Air plot, CIC. U.S. Fighter Direct report to the control station immediately. On the 7th of May, 1942, the Battle of the Coral Sea took place. destroyed or disabled. The United States' greatest loss in the battle was the carrier Lexington, the fighting lady. It was the greatest naval engagement in history, and the victory laid the groundwork for the even greater sea victory at Midway where the back of the Imperial Japanese Navy was broken.